Hello everyone, welcome to the Deep Dive. It's me, Chris Pajak, and it's Josh Williams again uh, for this one. Uh, this one is titled, beautifully, I think anyway, Jürgen's Tactical Timeline. What we're going to be doing today, if you're new to the Deep Dive, is we, we pick a couple of topics each and every week, uh, and we look at them through the lens of analysis, stats, tactics, whatever you want to call it, um, all those boring words. Um, Josh, this one is a topic that you wanted to discuss this week. We're about halfway through the season now. Um, and I think we've all seen that Jürgen's tried a few things to get Liverpool motor in this season, maybe get our points per game up and get us a few wins under the belt, a few goals, maybe at times stop conceding. Uh, sometimes it's been because of injury, sometimes it's been because of other, uh, other forces. But I think one thing, when you look at it, when you said this topic to me, I was like, look at that. He's tried a lot, hasn't he? Like, you, you realise it at the time. And th there was a portion of the season where we were like, is it 4 4 2? Is it 4 2 4? Is it 4 2 3 1? And all this type of stuff. He's tried absolutely loads. So, what we wanted to look at today, really, Josh, isn't it? Is that we wanted to look at all the things he's tried and the reasons for those changes. And then also maybe the reasons that they have or haven't worked. So, we're going to start off with the 4 3 3 today. Um, obviously, it's a. It's a a formation that Jürgen's had loads and loads of success with uh, throughout his Liverpool tenure. Um, we started this season basically playing almost exactly the same way as last season, uh, but without Sadio Mane um, as one of the main key figures. It didn't quite work for us then, did it? Uh, not really. I had no no real issue initially with um, with sticking with the the go to system. You know, I think okay, okay, we lost Mane, but everything else remained largely the same. And you can replace Mane with Jota, with Diaz, and potentially even with Nunes as well. So I think going into the season, keeping the original 4 3 3 with the um, subtle layers of Trent kind of operating as like a bit of a 10 at times uh, and things like that, um, I think it was it made sense. You know, we, it looked good in the, the Community Shield game against Manchester City. We had no overwhelming reason to change it. But. I think gradually we started to pick up on some issues mm. in comparison to previous seasons. I think they, they primarily stemmed from A, the midfield department, and B, Trent. Um, obviously, the World Cup was going to take place in a couple of months' time. Trent was very much under the microscope, I felt, in terms of the media and things like that. So his defensive contributions in particular were getting highlighted yeah. more than usual. So And it felt like every week... Teams were targeting them, didn't they? Yeah, it, it did, didn't it? And now, Trent's position is a funny one for me because I think it changed a little bit towards the back end of last season. I don't know whether you'd agree on that. I think, you know, over the years, we saw Trent go up and down the right-hand side quite often and, and whip balls in. And towards the back end of last season, we started seeing him more come inside a little bit. What do you think the reasoning for that was? Well, I think it added an element of unpredictability to Liverpool's game because at times when Trent would do that, I suppose Henderson could drift out wide Salah could come inside and he'd rotate as a three, as we touched on last week, last week's episode. Um, in addition to that, obviously, if he's coming in from wide areas and he's operating in more of a half space, it just mixes up his deliveries into the box mm -hmm. um, and can cause more problems for opponents to track because for years before this, Trent had, had began to establish himself as this creator and teams were getting, not getting to grips with him, but just they knew what to expect from him. Yeah. So if he starts popping up in these areas in the centre of the pitch, it just provides opponents with a bit of a problem to solve almost. Um, but over time, it started to be a problem for Liverpool on the defensive side of the game, specifically when we engaged in the high press. So if Liverpool are pressing high up the pitch, it was the original front three, whoever was taking part in the front three, then Trent would kind of creep up and form part of the press and the two eights would also do the same. And it'd kind of be a little bit like that, um, pressing high up the pitch. Now, one of the issues with the way it worked was we had Thiago and Henderson in the midfield sometimes. Sometimes it was, I mean, we had loads of injuries at the start of the season, didn't we? But whoever was there... Harvey felt, Elliott played a part at the beginning yeah, of the season as well, of course. Yeah, Harvey Elliott was involved. And whoever was there, it felt like Liverpool were just always a bit late to challenges. It felt like Liverpool were getting progressed through. And a lot of the time, they were getting progressed through behind Trent. Uh, that was where teams were making inroads. And it felt like it was on repeat. I think United uh, got a lot of benefit from from behind Trent. We drew against Crystal Palace early in the season. And ultimately, it led Klopp to a point where 
he decided to, to change formation, didn't he? Yeah, he did, definitely. And one of the things that I think we noticed at the start of the season, you mentioned it right, right at the top, really, as well. One of the other things that Trent started to do was, in an attacking sense, he would start to drift in field and almost play on the edge of the box sometimes uh, in what you would probably consider more a natural number 10s position. And if you're thinking about that, then the rotation around the midfielders and the centre-halves and the left-back, all this would come into play where everybody almost has to shift over. Uh, and in the end, I think that just it just stopped working for us, didn't it? I don't think we got too much joy out of Trent uh, from playing in that position. And then we moved on, didn't we? We, we? we changed to a 4-4-2. And I think looking at the average positions and stuff over the last sort of, well, half a season, we actually changed from Trent being the flying fullback to the left back being the flying fullback at times. And that was obviously maybe the first steps of how are we going to counter people getting in behind Trent Alexander Arnold? Well, we trust Robertson and we trust Costas Jimakas to go a little bit higher. And maybe we didn't quite get the joy in terms of assists and creativity from that left hand side as we would do if we were pushing Trent forward. So we've moved on to the four four two. And what was the reason for you that specifically we moved to this formation? Well, I actually wrote a piece around this at the time for Liverpool.com, and um, around the game before and after press conferences and things, I watched and listened quite carefully to what Klopp was saying. And it seemed like a shift that wasn't just for one game. It was only against Rangers, I think, in the Champions League, wasn't it, that we first saw this. So you're probably not going to adjust for Rangers in Anfield. You're going to just play your usual way. But the original 4-4-2 that we started to go with, Klopp seemed to speak in a way that suggested that it was going to be a bit of a permanent move. And it was primarily for Trent, stemming from the high press that I've just touched on before. Mm -hmm. So the difference that this made was, if Liverpool engaged in the high press, It'd be the front two engaging in it. It'd be the left side of mid, the right side of mid, and the two centre mids. There's your front six. And that allowed Trent to stay back and he didn't get he didn't form part of the high press. And as a result of that, those balls in behind them were just not as available when it comes to Liverpool pressing high up the field, mm -hmm. stopping opponents from building up. And in that sense, it looked like a sensible move. It looked it made I saw sort the of logic in it at the time. I thought it'd fix some of our issues. But we still we didn't really improve too much. I mean there was one or two nice results, but overall performance wise, still lots of problems. Yeah, I think when when it comes round to the second game against Rangers and we're playing in that four four two formation, we've got Henderson and Fabinho in the middle of the park. We've got Carvalho playing off the left hand side. And we've got Harvey Elliott playing off the right-hand side, I think it was, with Firmino and Nunes up top. Now, Fabinho and Henderson as a midfield too, when both are probably not far away from looking at a World Cup place. Um, I think that has some has affected a lot of internationals this season. But Fabinho hasn't really played in a two for us at all. You know, there have been times early on where we threw him in a two. I think back to the Arsenal game away where he got absolutely ripped in his first season. And then there was a couple of games where we took him out for, played him as part of a two, but never really got it. And then Carvalho and the likes of Elliot on, on the wing. We just never seen, I don't think we ever really seen to have the players for this type of a 4-4-2 formation. And it, it was always a difficult one really, wasn't it? I mean, well, where one, did, well, Salah wasn't playing in that second Rangers game anyway. Well, I was going to say one of the interesting things about the four four two that initially was a problem with the ball was Salah was originally here, and that was when the talk started to emerge about Salah. He's not no way near involved. He's too far from goal. He wasn't scoring very much, and he was a game second leg I think against Rangers where Salah plays here for half an hour in a in the second half. Because we so, started with Firmino and uh, Nunes up top, and Salah comes on. Yeah, I think it was Diaz over here, potentially Salah over there. And then when Salah played as the as one of the front two, he scored three. And that just narratives overload then. Salah needs to play through the middle and things like that. And I do think he was he was sensing it. Um but we we didn't see this for as long as we expected because this player here got injured, Luis Diaz, mm -hmm. against Arsenal. Um and on top of on top of that maybe his replacement, Jota, got injured against Manchester City in the 1-0 win over them. So, on the back of that, you lose your width yeah. then. And, as you say, the, the players occupying these two spots then, with the likes of Elliot, Carvalho, just didn't work, did it? 
No, not at all. And, and I, I think that's why, you know, we flirted around, didn't we, with this 4-3-1-2. I mean, some people were calling it a 4 2 2 2 at times. There was all kinds of things, but we certainly went to a diamond with Firmino in the 10. Um, and, you know, we, we played Nunes and Salah up front, I think it was. Bobby Firmino in a 10 there. Yeah. Uh, Fabinho, obviously, at the base of it. But, and again, you know, we've just gone from a 4 4 2 formation when we're looking for width to then move into a very narrow formation. Yeah. And it, at that point, again, is it, you've moved the. You've moved the needle one way. Oh, that hasn't worked. Shit. <laughs> Fumf. You flicked it completely the opposite. Yeah. But you could see the sense because we didn't have any wingers. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. But also, we don't, we've don't. we never played like that. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting system, the diamonds. It's always been always been a weird one. Always been a... Rodgers. An it just one, reminds yeah. me of Rodgers. Yeah, it's very Rodgers, isn't it? Yeah. But, I, again, I can see the sense in it. You know, we had no wide players suddenly because they'd both picked up long-term injuries. And the three attackers we had was Firmino, Signature central player, Nunes for me, central player, and Salah, who just posted that big narrative scoring a hat trick against Rangers. Play so, central, play so, central, play yeah, central. exactly. Suddenly had to play through the middle. So you start playing with a diamond then. Um, a lot of emphasis on the fullbacks to get up and down the flanks because we've got no width. I think Robertson's pretty well suited to that actually, and I think Trent maybe a little bit less, but still more than athletic enough to do it. Um, but we used it for a few games, and I specifically remember Ajax away. I think we got hammered playing the system. Remember? We, yeah, but we 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 won the game, didn't we? But I think we, we won the we game. But, yeah, yeah. Cause we, we lost against Napoli away, and then we won the rest of them, didn't we? But it was not a good or a vintage Liverpool performance. Like technically, no. I don't think we were there at the races at all. Um, no, I think I think we had some joy with Firmino and. Uh, Salah and Nunes as a bit of a partnership, seeing early signs that they could potentially blend well together. But other than that, Liverpool still seemed wide open, still tried to do the whole high press. It didn't really work particularly well. And looking at it now, I can't particularly think of anyone really who shined. No, um, I think I remember, Firmino maybe. I remember, I remember this game, and I think one of the games we played Henderson on the left of the midfield, and we played Harvey Elliott on the right of the midfield. And then you've got Firmino and Salah and Nunes, and it's and every time every formation we've touched upon, and maybe the starting game. One of the things that I noticed looking back at it was there was always seems to be centre halves missing as well. Like Joe Gomez pops up one week and Canate the next, then Matip the week after that, and Van Dijk's there as a permanent fixture. You'd see Costas, then you'd see no Robert, then you'd see Robertson. There was changes all over the field, almost consistently through September, October, November. And when you're trying to implement new systems and you're losing guys to injuries, and then you you got no training time because we're in the midst of six games in the Champions League, in between the league games and stuff like that, and you've got early rounds of the Car uh, Carlin Cup, Carabao Cup, and all that type of stuff. What we were having is no training time, change of formation every single week, and then almost throwing the baby out with the bathwater because it doesn't work. And yet, Klopp's tried loads and loads and loads of different things, hasn't he, before we got a little bit of the madness of Darwin Nunes on the left-hand side back in a 4-3-3. Yeah, well, as I said, the, the diamond didn't last particularly long. It didn't really work, didn't improve our performances at all. And I think before too long, Klopp kind of went back in time a little bit and he went towards the 4-3-3 which we initially started the season with um, but the difference this time was Nunes was involved and he was on the left as opposed to playing through the centre where he predominantly played for Benfica and Salah was back in his customary role on the right side um, but Liverpool still attempted to do the usual high press still attempted to play in the same way I suppose the difference from the start of the season was this This was Nunes um, personally I think he's a sensible player. I don't overly like him on the flanks, but I will give him credit. For a couple of weeks, he was a massive problem on that side for a lot of opposing teams. Uh, and I think he scored a fair few as well, didn't he? Yeah, he definitely did, didn't he? And I think I remember I remember this sort of portion of the season quite well because I think we first moved back to the 4-3-3 against Derby in the Cup. Yeah. And then it was the next game where Nunes is introduced maybe on that left-hand side as the wide forward. And he was barreling down that left-hand side and it was the agent of chaos. And, you know, he just disrupts teams and he's a hellraiser and all this type of stuff. Everyone's talking about him. He's dead fast. He's dead direct. He likes to get in behind. We were finding, we were finding ways to get him in behind. And I think for him as a new player coming into the football club, obviously a few months earlier, 
he was he had a bit more time on the ball. And I think that probably helped him, didn't it? I think when he was playing sort of central earlier on in the season, I personally don't think the plan was to play Nunes from the start of the season, centrally. Yeah. I think it was a few minutes here and there. Over the next two months, we'll phase him in, we'll work the attack out, we'll look at how we can get him involved. And then, you know, injuries and everything else just went, we have to play him central. And Salah and the left winger weren't quite used to the way that Nunes plays that nine as opposed to someone like a Bobby Firmino. And we don't don't really get any joy from him. So when we put him on that left hand side, we're going to just unleash him, just be a problem. We saw all of a sudden that he could absolutely give people nightmares on that left wing, couldn't he? Yeah. Well, you described him before by saying he's he's dead quick, he's dead direct, loves to get in behind, and that same description applied to Manic. Yeah. So that was why, he, although I think he's a sensible player, that was why he suited this role pretty well, especially if Firmino's here doing that. Nunes is running in behind. And as you say, he, he caused plenty of problems. The issue was, despite that making some sense, Liverpool still tried to play in the same way defensively. Mm. And that was still a high press, really high up the pitch with the midfield eights expected to cover lots of ground. Uh, Trent getting involved. And Liverpool have continued to get opened up despite going back towards the 4-3-3. Um, and that, I suppose, moves us towards what was a really weird isolated change against Brighton which featured uh, <laughs> Thiago, in Thiago, the Thiago was a 10 <laughs> just out of nowhere <laughs> we were doing a watch along for that and about three minutes in I'm like is Thiago playing a 10 there <laughs> is that is this really happening because and credit to Brighton I think here and because they just did what Liverpool have done for years sort your problems out as players on the pitch they recognised what Thiago was doing and went straight to the left back and straight in behind Thiago. Now, that's not to say that it didn't work. I think Thiago has more recoveries in the final third than any other player that day. I think Liverpool had 13 recoveries, if I remember correctly, in the final third. I think Brighton had 14 in the final third, so they outdid us on it. But Liverpool did recover the ball higher up the pitch. The, pro the problem was Matuma was ripping anything to shreds that came near him on that left-hand side. Yeah. So he played this 4-3-1-2 and I, I, I don't know where it came from. I think Thiago's been playing, you know, that sort of left-sided eight quarterback role for quite some time. Then all of a sudden, pops up in the hole, and he's a terrier. Yeah, like it, yeah. we never really used him in a creative sense. We just went, go find the ball, lads. It was like playing fetch <laughs> with yeah. a dog, wasn't it? Just go, fuck off, go on, Thiago, go. It was crazy. <laughs> well, th this was Ox as well. Ox was playing deeper than Thiago, so you move Thiago away from like the build-up phase of the game and let Ox do it, which is a a, a weird decision to make um, I, I, I think maybe did, did I, I mean Arsenal beat Brighton 4-2 away from home maybe Klopp wanted Thiago to be a bit of an Odegaard in, in, in the role that he played because Odegaard was up, up, occupying those spaces and Arsenal scored four on the back of it but it just did not work at all um, there, was, there was something that I posted on Twitter actually where Brighton have got the ball here the goalkeeper's got the ball um, he passes to Lewis Dunk to his right. Liverpool are pressing in like this weird, it looked like that Liverpool's press. And he was a Brighton player here. Lewis Dunk gets the ball and just plays one pass straight down Four Liverpool's flank. Game. Everyone out the game, Brighton stays away in our half. And obviously it stems from a diamond system because the diamond's really narrow. And I mean, Klopp said after the game, didn't he? It was something like the worst game he's ever seen or something. He yeah. said it was it was a disaster. Like, Yeah, it really was. And one of the reasons I think we, we did this is we didn't have Nunes to play in that left-hand side at the time, did we? Um, and we used Cody Gakpo as the striker yeah. in this one as well. So, again, we've, we've just signed a new player. He, he started life on the left-hand side, very quickly been thrown into the middle because of no Bobby Firmino was available to us, no Nunes available to us. Uh, and all of a sudden, those injuries are starting to pile up and the manager's starting to wonder, oh, well, how can I play a 4-3-3? We've been getting torn apart week after week. Um, so easily, I've got to do something different. And I can kind of understand it as well in that, centrally, I think with Liverpool have been really bad defensively. I think there's times when it's just been like the partner of the Red Sea. There's, was it Wolves or where the fella just runs literally through yeah. the middle of the team and you're like... Yeah, or Leicester maybe. I mean, there was, there was a, yeah, there was Leicester a, there was a classic hall. example, yeah. And when you're like, what's going on? Like, you're just running through the middle of the team here. I mean, 
it's mental. Some yeah. of the some of the mistakes that Liverpool have made, but in terms of pressing angles and pressing shadows and stuff, this didn't work, and it was quickly booted off uh, back for a four three three, but a different four three three this time. Uh, against Chelsea last weekend. Yeah, well, this the, this is the most recent game against Chelsea. We went back to the four three three, but the the huge difference here um, was Liverpool binned the high press. Yeah. So when Kepa had the ball, Liverpool had no interest. When Thiago Silva had the ball, and whoever was partnering them, I think it was by, by the shield, wasn't yeah, it? Um, Liverpool kind of adopted the shape that was a bit like that, very much a mid block. Very compact, everyone together, and it allowed Liverpool to get much more of a foothold on the middle at least. Liverpool didn't get sliced open anywhere near as much. Chelsea did create chances, but they were from set pieces. Yeah, terrible from set pieces. Stupid yeah. mistakes, really, from players just flapping it for no reason. Yeah, I remember obviously I was in the ground for this one, and you know, the first thing, you know, it was pro I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't pick up on the mid block straight away. I was probably 20 minutes into the game, and I was like, this is different. Mm. There's something going on here, and where, where I was, it wasn't brilliant for the view, to be honest with you. Um, but then I realised that you know we were a lot deeper. We we had no interest at all in pressurising Chelsea's defenders. Now, interestingly, me and Stay um, had an interesting conversation, and I know your viewpoint is very close to Stay on the defensive side of things. I know you think that Liverpool defended well against Chelsea. I'm not sure we did personally in that. I think it's much easier to look like you defended well when you've dropped numbers in. I'm not sure that, like, I don't see how if if our attackers aren't playing well, we can continue with this system, to be honest. Well, I, th I think the attack was a problem, without doubt. Like, we, we did not keep the ball, didn't use the ball particularly well. James Milner put in 11 crosses on the day, which was more than double any of his teammates, despite the fact that here you had Harvey Elliott, who's about 5'2". Mo Salah, who's never scored a header in his life, and Cody Gakpo, who might be... Was that, was that actually... That, no, come on, that's, that's not bullshit. true. That's good. not true. That's good, not good, 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 good. And Cody Gakpo, who, OK, he's like 6'3", but again, he's, he's not a header of the ball. We yeah. talked to him a few weeks ago, didn't we? Um, so the attacking side of Liverpool's game did not work. That's, that's clear. Um, and as a result of that, I think we conceded the majority of our chances through just giving the ball away stupidly. But when it comes to Chelsea building from their goalkeeper... Liverpool, I don't think Liverpool got opened up anywhere near as much. I don't know if it, and again, what, does what this, you think on does, that. Does this feel again like, all right, we went wide with the with the uh, four four two with the width, and then we've gone shit. We're going to a diamond. <laughs> we went press high against Brighton with Thiago in the ten. Shit, everyone <laughs> drops back into a mid block into a mid block. Yeah, is that what? <laughs> it, do, it, it does feel a bit reactive, like doesn't it? But at the same time. We didn't I, concede, I, I think, and we got a point in the game. Yeah, and, and I, I think this might have made more sense as the original switch months ago. Rather than going from 4-3-3 uh, to 4-4-2, and we showed why we did that to protect Trent and things like that, I think it would have made more sense back then for Klopp to just, rather than pressing high up the pitch with everybody, you know, the pitch is massive and things like that, just drop everyone back. Appreciate the fact that we've got no Jota, we've got no Diaz. The midfield getting on, you know, they're getting old, they can't cover the ground that they used to cover. Everyone seems shattered. So just form a bit of more of a compact block. You still press, but it's more a case of you, you, you wait, pick your moments, and then when he goes, everyone then comes with him. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Um, One of the things that I noticed from in the ground, and I, I've not watched this game back as why the fuck would you? Um, <laughs> but and it's probably quite easy to sort of do. In terms of us having a mid-block, we definitely did. I don't really think we dropped the defenders too much further back, did you? No, 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 we didn't. There was a point where I remember looking at it thinking, every single player from Liverpool is in about 20 yards here. And it was a really dangerous position if Chelsea had the pace behind. Now, I don't think they necessarily had that pace and were able to crack us open, but there was a couple where the ball goes to Alisson. Um, but there was really sort of 20, 25 yards there, wasn't there? You, you know, you got to pick, he's got a picture up. Uh, maybe we'll be able to put this on the screen for you right now. Yeah, that's uh, one, I create, one I created earlier. <laughs> um, that's that, that's Liverpool's system on the day when Chelsea have got the ball. I think by the Shields just played a pass to Cucurella, and you can see Liverpool are really high, about as high as they are on this, uh, on the tactics board. 
but still really compact because Salah, uh, Gakpo and Elliot mm -hmm. are not engaging in the high press and Thiago and Keita are following them in a high press. And I th again, I like that. I think it made sense because, again, Gakpo, who played as a striker on the day, has been in the building for a couple of weeks. Harvey Elliott is not the best presser. You know, we, we know he's keen to do it, but we know in terms of like doing it properly and, and winning the ball he and things like that. He does well in those, yeah. Yeah, and then you've got a midfield department that are ageing, we've touched on that, and Salah's like 30 years old now or something, so it felt like more of a... Some joined up prag thinking. Pragmatic, maybe, yeah, yeah you could yeah. say. Um, just as a, I think when everyone's back, I try not to mention his name, but say if we've got Bellingham back in, in, back in the midfield, <laughs> in the midfield for the first time, um, and we've got a front three of like Jota and Diaz and... People these, know how to press runners, and yeah. can do it. Proper runners and dusties and things like that, used to it. I think the high press will come back, but maybe just for the next six months, I hope we keep this. But my concern is maybe this was just to face Chelsea, who were a good side, and maybe when Liverpool face, I don't know, like a Fulham or a Bournemouth or something like that, this is going to start coming back again and yeah. we're going to get opened up again. That would be my concern. Yeah, I must admit, I, I don't see why, personally, I don't see why he'd do it just for Chelsea. Because I don't think they're playing particularly well. You know, I might be wrong on that. I do feel like this might be the start of. I think you, the word you used was right. I think this is the pragmatic stage now. Yeah. You know, we can't stop. We can't lose games anymore. We've got to be difficult to beat, and maybe just trust that you know Mo pulls something out the bag, and you know our, our forward players are able to do something. That maybe you know we get back to being good from set pieces like we were earlier on in the season. We won a lot of points through set pieces. We know that Mo Salah scored three goals himself from you know second phase or third phase of of, of of corner kicks and stuff. Maybe that's where that might be the difference between us and those teams around us vying for those European places. So yeah. I think it's really interesting. I think you know when the likes of Diaz is back, obviously we're, we're thinking it could be um, February time. Jota could be a little bit later, but Bobby Firmino comes back and maybe Bobby comes back into this formation and Gakpo goes on that left hand side and. Yeah, well, with Gakpo here and Nunes there, which obviously wasn't the case against Chelsea, this was Elliot who was left-footed and he was yeah. playing on the left, which is just wrong, really, in Liverpool systems. And then you had Gakpo there who, I think it's fair to say, he looked uncomfortable, didn't he? Um, so Brilliant. when everyone's back, but even just Nunes back, and you've got Nunes doing that with Gakpo potentially cutting inside and Salah doing what he usually does, the attack and balance will be restored a little bit, but defensively, it looked a lot better. Yeah, and how... Let, let, yeah, no, OK. And... So how, let's say, we put Gakpo back in uh, on the left or Nunes yeah. or, or something like that up front. How do we solve the problem of the midfield? Because obviously there was a big thing in Stefan Baitetic getting the nod over for Fabinho. Is that a player that you can foresee keeping that shirt for a little while now? Well, what I think is interesting is, although Baitetic played, I think if Liverpool would have played like this, like he did against Chelsea with the mid-block, with Fabinho there, Shock, I think he probably looks a lot better. Yeah. Because he's covering a lot less ground, he's got players around him. But we went with Bessetic. Bessetic played quite well. I think he probably played well enough to keep his place. Um, but I don't think Liverpool can start doing the big high press thing again until we've got new, we've got new legs in the midfield. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with that. And it, it, what, what I was sort of hoping to come on to actually is that we have actually seen Bessetic in an eight this season only one time. Could we see that where because you know you've got that in fellow who is a really good six, he's really industrious. Now, the one thing I would caveat this with is he's blowing up on 60 70 minutes at the moment because I don't think he's primed for yeah. 90 minutes every single week. Would there be an option where we play Fabinho and Bacetic and maybe one of those eights, maybe replace a Jordan Anderson or something, keep the creativity from Thiago there? Potentially, but if we do, I would still been the high press for now. Yeah. I don't think I'd bring the high press back until not just the midfield has more legs in there, but also just Jota back and Diaz back and Firmino back. Because that them three are defensive monsters really, especially Firmino obviously. Jota puts a foot in quite a lot. Whereas Gakpo's not particularly accustomed to it. Nunes has been he's very intense, but he's get, still getting to grips with Liverpool's defensive ways, pressing wise. Mm -hmm. Um so I, I would still refrain from from doing full Liverpool, full Klopp, until everyone's back and the midfield's got new legs. 
okay well let's hope that the midfield gets new legs in the next week um, <laughs> but I very much doubt that it's going to happen Josh um, really interesting stuff mate thanks again we're going to go uh, over to record our Red Men Plus show now we're going to look a little bit at Mason Mount the reports are coming in aren't they Josh that Liverpool have a very serious interest in Mason Mount and they have done for a long time to be fair it's not a January signing, so we thought we'd do a bit of a deep dive into Mason Mount and look at how he would fit into Jürgen's system and potential future plans. Uh, so if you want to get over there, uh, redmenplus.com, they've got a code for you to sign up and get a free month. Um, so you can do that with the code MOUNT. You just need to go to redmenplus.com, uh, sign up as a club captain, which is normally £5 a month, uh, and use the code MOUNT to get it for free. Uh, not only do you get uh, an extra show um, of Deep Dive every single week, but we've got Jano Insight uh, this week with uh, Neil Jones, as it always is, and he's discussing the credibility of those Mason Mount rumours. So, yeah, uh, please go over there, try it out. If you like it, keep it. If you don't like it, fuck it off. Uh, but we'd appreciate you at least trying it out for us. Josh, thanks again. Oh, really mate. appreciate it. And we're recording that Mason Mount one. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching that show. Did you know if you go over to redmenplus.com and sign up as a Club Legend subscriber, you will get access to our amazing Discord chat, 20% off merchandise, live tickets every year for free, plus all our incredible content. And you'll get absolutely everything right as it happens. So get over there and do it.